Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for everything you're doing. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for your very presence tonight. We thank you for your word that can never fail. We thank you for everyone that's, that's, that's tuned in to listen, Lord, that the, that the Bible will become alive to them. But also they'll feel your presence. And Lord, because in your presence, fullness of joy and liberty forevermore. And Lord, we welcome the Holy Spirit to teach us. We thank you for the outpouring of the Spirit for all mankind and all flesh. Lord, that you said that we that call upon your name shall be saved. Thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Tonight I want you to turn to Psalms 91. We're just going to look at the first verse. Tonight's message is Psalms 91, 91 Devok, part one. Devok, 91 Devok, is the reverse of COVID-19. And when God gave me that, I put it in Google and my out came Psalm 91. The reverse, now listen to me, COVID-19, what makes it so dangerous to us is that we can't see it. And what you don't understand is this, it's hidden in darkness. Now you don't understand this darkness. I didn't understand it. I'm sitting up in my prayer and praying today and God brought me back the two times when he intervened and protected me and even my family. I don't know if you know what darkness is, but I'm telling you that one time I was traveling from Tennessee back to North Carolina and uh, that was a mountain slide. Before I got there and the road was blocked. So I had to take the crooked, the, 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 the crooked road instead of the main highway. But in the middle of that, it was a, a storm. I'm talking about the storm of storms. Now, I was married at the time, and my family, they were all sleeping. I'm looking at them like, good time for y'all to be sleeping. I want to tell you that night, I want to take the place, and I didn't want to be a man again. I wanted somebody else to drive. I couldn't see anything. It was so dark. I want to tell you something. In the mountains, and when there is no light, I'm telling you, and it was it was pouring down rain, and I could the headlights I couldn't see in front of me. Only thing I could think about on this crooked road, you'd avoid this road. If you looked on the map today, you will not drive this road because it is a T. You can run off the mountain, and everybody sleep, and I'm praying. But I want to tell you something, that, that I'm driving and I couldn't see. Yeah, I'm talking about it's a different kind of darkness. I'm talking about the darkness, darkest of darkness. This is not a Moncure dark. When I'm in Moncure, it's no street lights, but it's not this dark. You can see the moon. You got the stars to guide you. I, I mean, you got the planets. But when it's cloudy and it's raining in the mountains, you can't see. But I want to tell you something, and he told me tonight, out of the blue came these sharp lightning. I'm telling you something, the lightning went through the car, everybody sleep. I'm telling you the lightning went through the car the whole time I was on that mountain. And I got off that mountain because the lightning came and I could see. And today when I was in prayer, he was telling me, he was rescuing us. I want to tell you something that even when you don't see him, he's working. My God, there he is. I'm telling you that if you look in your life, you will find you have some stories like this where God showed up in the most craziest ways. I'm going to tell you lightning was flashing all on that road the whole time I stayed on that road. All the way till I got to the North Carolina line and back on the highway. I want to tell you, I didn't think about it to today when I was talking to him in a secret place. I want to tell you that you got some things in your life that God has done for you that no man can do, those nobody can give in you the glory. You are here today because of his divine protection. Or right, listen to me. But I want you to understand tonight, you're going to go into that secret place. And I want you to see something. 
In Psalm 91, in the New American Standard, it says, He who dwells, and I want you to circle that word dwell in your Bible, or if you have the book, I want you to put a bracket aside. Because when we look at that dwell, we don't dwell today. You don't tell people, I'm going to dwell. <laughs> you say you're going home. You didn't say you're going to dwell. You say, I'm going to bed. Or you say, I'm going to sit down. Or you say that I'm going to rest. Or you listen to me. But we see that and we read the Bible. We don't understand it and we just go on in life. But I want you to put a bracket by that. He says, he who dwells in the shelter. Now, when we think about a shelter, we're talking about a smokehouse. We're thinking about a shed. We're thinking about a shack. But you got to understand, that's the way they wrote back then. He said, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High. That's a powerful word right there. You need to highlight that in your Bible with a bright yellow and put something around it. We're going to get back to that word. We'll find, it says, will abide. That's another word we don't know much about. Abide? I mean, when the last time you used the word abide? I mean, you can quote these things but not understand it. You can read it and never understand it. But tonight you're going to be in it. Or right, listen to me. Just like I was on that mountain, I'm telling you that he came to our rescue through a lightning storm that lasted over 40 minutes to get us off that mountain because I couldn't see. And you know what else? I was the only car out because we leave about 3 o'clock in the morning we left, we was about three o'clock in the morning that, that coming, coming there. That's about eight hours, seven hours from North Carolina, from, from where I live. But you know what? God was there. I will tell you, if you think about some times when God reached down and done some miracles for you, that's why you love him. That's why you want to live for him. That's why you give him your all. Now, I want you to continue to read verse one. He says, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High, will abide in the shadow. Now, now, I want you to understand, when we say these things, we don't understand the shadow, but we do understand it. If you look at, sometimes somebody seems to be pressing you, like your parents, while you're growing up, I can't wait to get out under your shadow, I can't even breathe. You are, you, you are, you are, you're man, you're, you know, we say that, but we didn't understand it. That means they were close. They was watching over you. They were making sure you do it right. They were making sure that you obey. They were making sure you don't transgress. They were making sure you stayed out of trouble. They were making sure they were doing their part to protect you. Now look what he said. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I want you to highlight that in a nice yellow and put some other things around it. Because those two words right there that we need to understand. Why did he use two different characters of God? Why did he use this, uh, two names but they're both God? One is the Most High and one is the Almighty. I want you to understand something. That we don't understand the, 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 the nature of God is it's very powerful. Now I want to read this to you in different versions and you begin to see the, the flavor. That's why you need to go to the Bible sometimes and look at it and read it in different versions. I want to read it to you in the Young's Literal Translation. And it says, He who is dwelling. I want you to write that down. Who is dwelling. That who is dwelling means present tense, Continuous action. Anytime you see the ing, that's not something that you do on a Sunday. That's not something you do on a holiday. That's not something you do on a special day. It's not something you've done once when you was in church and you never do again for the rest of your life. It's a continuum. He said, he who is dwelling. Now watch this. In the secret place. Now I like the secret place better than a shelter. And you're going to see why. Because I'm going to tell you something that you can't see COVID-19 or any other of your enemies. Are you ready for this? But they always see you. Even though they're lurking in the darkness, you bring the light. 
you because you're in the secret place. And I want to show you, just like I said, that you look on and you see the, what, what, what you just walked through. I want you to understand something. He shared another story with me where an angel came. Very similar. Well, I left Bible study. I think me and a couple of the men was putting in air conditioners. We finished the job. It got a little late. And I got home. And on my way home, there was a thunderstorm. And I want to tell you, I used to take the old road because I lived in a different place. And I took the old New Hill Road, and I was on the New Hill Road to get back to Durham. And I noticed all the leaves was on the road. And the wind was blowing. I couldn't see. It was dark. It was hell hitting my car. And the trees was like they were bending in my car. Nobody else on the road. And then all of a sudden, out of the blue was a car in front of me. And a gentleman, out of the blue, just a car was in front of me. He made a U-turn and rode up to my window and he said, Sir, you can't go no further. A giant tree just fell down. I said, a tree? He said, yeah, we're in a tornado. I said, a tornado? He said, yeah. He said, we're in a tornado. It was on, on the radio. I said, I said, so what, what you want me to do? He said, turn around and follow me. So I followed him. And he turned off, we got went about five, ten minutes, and he said, I got to turn. I said, where are you going? He said, I'm going to my house. I said, can I go to your house? He said, you don't have to go to my house. You're going to be okay. You just stay on that road, and I had to go a totally different route. And when you get to the end, turn left, and you'll be in Apex. When I got to Apex, I found a handy dandy, and I pulled up at the store, me and the person working, and he said, there's tornadoes all around us. I said, tornadoes? He said, yeah, there was one right over here spotted. That was where I was. He said, you can stay here until it's over. So I was there praying Psalm 91. And that was back in 1995 and 1996. I want to tell you something. You need to meditate on Psalm 91. Now, I'm going to tell you what happened. When I got back, I took that route on Sunday. That was on Thursday, or, or, or Wednesday or Thursday. Maybe been on a, well, that tree was so large, they had cut it in pieces and put it on the side of the road. That tree was only about 20 feet in front of me. I don't know where that car came from. That was when I knew that that man was an angel. He told me, you're going to be all right. You just follow the road. And he was exactly right. I want to talk to you tonight about that secret place. I want to tell you that it's, it's time for you to stop doing everything in your own strength and your own might. Let the Most High be the Most High. Let the Almighty be your strength. I want to talk to you. Look what it says in the Young's literal translation. He who is dwelling in the secret place. I want to talk to you. He who is dwelling in the secret place of the Most High in the shade of the mighty lodge habitually. He means you stay there. I want to stay in God's presence. I want you to know tonight you should want to stay in His protected power. I'm not talking about just through the season of COVID-19, but I want to share something with you. The who is crazy. They got doctor in front of the name and doctor behind the name. But I'm telling you, I'm not following a bunch of folks that change every day. I'm going during this season, I'm going to follow the most high. And I'm suggest that you will follow the Almighty. I'm talking about live within him, dwell within him, be in him. And I'm not sure how you got there was through that communion tonight. In that communion tonight, you came in the fellowship through Jesus Christ, who has bore all your sins, who have bore all your griefs, who have bore all your hurts. He's bore all your sorrows. And did you know what he said? He took your place. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's why I have to forgive everybody, people. I can't hold no grudges. I can't walk around and want things that, no, no, no. The Bible said, be merciful. 
and you shall obtain mercy. It says in the Lord's Prayer, while standing, forgive so that you'll be forgiven. Are oh, you listening to me today? This is all in that secret place. Let me tell you something about that secret place. That when you're in the secret place, you're in the very presence of God because of Jesus Christ. You never leave that presence because Christ is not, he is not fighting in heaven. He's not tired in heaven. He's seated in heaven. He is literally what this word says, dwelling in heaven. He is saying that you dwell in that place. You dwell in there because you're dwelling in Christ. You are seated with Christ. You're at rest. You are seated. You are sitting in the very presence of God. Now, when you're in the secret place, you can see what God sees. That's why I tell people, I can read your mail. I can know your thoughts. Are you listening to me today? Because when God sees, he can, you can see as God sees. You can hear as God hears. And guess what else, people? You can speak as God spoke through his word. Look what he said in the, next, in the New Living Translation. Those who live, I want you to understand, live. That, that live there, I live in my house. Did you know that I live in a city called Raleigh, Durham? Did you know I go to church in a city? When I go, I live. He's, he's not talking about you doing something part-time. This is where we have had problems because we got people who don't want to stay in the presence of God. He can't protect you. It's an umbrella protection. I want you to understand tonight. Look what he said. Those who live. So that word dwell there means living in the shelter of the Most High will find rest. That's what it's that that's where the shade is. Will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Many years ago I wrote an acronym for the word rest. I never heard anyone, but it's in my sec it's in my first book, and it's entitled "Reliable Eternal State of Trust." You see, whenever you read those books, those books is, is about relationship building, but they also about building a relationship with God, and it's also about how to study God's Word. It's also how to receive from God's Word. Or right, listen to me, little secrets that God put in rest. I want you to know something, that it's a reliable, eternal state of trust. It never changes. His faithfulness is my shield and my defense. All you have to know is that God going to pull me through this. God going to be with me. Let me tell you what a shield is. The shield is not you walking around holding something up. God's word is your shield. It said his faithfulness is my shield and my defense, my rampart. My rampart is, the, is my castle. It's the wall of my castle. So if the shield happened to break, it doesn't still can't get you. The Bible says that God is a high tower that I run into in a time of trouble. I've been in that tower before. Many times, many times, whenever trouble come, I would go to that place and I would look over the, in that tower. I could see the disturbances that was on the hill in my life coming against me. You know where I was at? I was in the secret place. I was in the place where nothing can touch me. No harm can come near me. No plague, no pestilence, no disease shall come near my dwelling. I want you to understand something. You've got to use your imagination. I've been doing this since I was a young person in Christ. I'm going to tell you 38 years later, I understand what I was doing. I was come on my knees and I would pray until I see the enemy and the attack. That's the tower. But look what he said here in the, in the literal uh, New Living Bible. Those 
those who live, so I'm telling you, you need to live in the shelter of the Most High, will find rest. And that rest is this. You should not be going out scared. I can see some people, they look so terrified. I don't, I'm telling you, you need to, you need to rest. It's, it, the rest is that you can, you can put your mask on or you can go without it. You can put your gloves on or you can go without it. Because, here's what I'm trying to say, you got the assurance that he will shield you. What I'm saying, you can put the mask on, you can put the gloves on, you can put the surgical gowns on and still be scared, still be nervous. When you get home, you're out of breath because you haven't taken a breath while you was out. Or you listen to me. <laughs> Think about that. God is saying, leave it to me. Rest. I'm telling you, do what you're supposed to do. We got a long ways to go with all this. You better get in the secret place so you can find rest. I got rest. You know, when I went to the March ceremony, I prayed. But nobody hung around me. Because I didn't fit in. They did not, They understood what I was saying when I said America must repent. They knew they must repent too. They didn't want to, they didn't want to hang around a sign like that. They want to hear about everybody. They want you to talk about some division. But I'm saying unless we all repent, we all going to perish. We all can have a change of heart. That's what's going to make everything better. Heal our land. But you didn't, I didn't understand this. But there was nobody around me for 50 feet. I was protected. I participated, but I was protected by the almighty shadow. Let me tell you what the shadow means. The shadow means that you're so close to God. Listen to me. You ever stood on the out of the sun and it's burning you up, but then you stand on the sage tree, you got about 30 degrees difference. But you move out under the shade tree, the tree didn't move. But God moves with you. Wherever you go, He goes with you. I will go with you where every place your foot should tread. I've given it to you. I'm talking to you to build the confidence so you can have rest instead of concern. Leave that to God's word. He said, I will be with you. I will be before you. I'm your real guard. I'm your side guard. This shield goes all the way around you because his feathers covers you. You are divinely protected because it sees you whether you see it or not. And I'm not just talking about COVID-19. I'm talking about the forces of hell that can shoot one arrow of doubt and fear into your head and make you believe the world is coming apart. This has nothing to do with, this is in all fear, financially, career, or aging, or illness, or whatever. You need to stand up and find that rest. He said, we'll find rest. Now in the Christian Standard Bible, it says the one the one, it makes it, it's in the other one said who? So we're getting this thing down to specifics. The one who lives under the protection of the Most High. Are you getting anything out of the word tonight? This ain't for just every Joe Blow. Now, I, I, in, the, in the book, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't agree with everything. Everybody wants everybody to have everything. God wants everybody to have all his protection. But he can't protect you if you don't allow him to. It says the one who lives under the protection of the Most High dwells in the shadow of the Almighty. That means that, that dwelling in the shadow. That means wherever I go, he's with me. I'm telling you, if his shadow is over you, the devil know, the demons know. The illnesses, no. All these things that come and take you out, no. Are oh, you listening to me today? But you can't see that in, this, in the natural realm. Because I'm not talking about a geographical or physical thing. 
I'm talking about a spiritual thing that is more real than the natural. Everything seen will change. But whether things are seen or not seen, whether it's high or low, nothing can separate us from the love of God. In the Christian Bible, it says the one who lives under the protection of the Most High dwells in the shadow of the Almighty. In the contemporary English version, he says, live under the protection. He just, the, the, that version says to everybody, live under the protection of the Most High God and stay. It says stay there. That rest means I'm not in a hurry. That I ain't got to fret. I ain't got to, I ain't got to be worried. I ain't got to be afraid. I'm at home. Watch this. And stay in the shadow of God all powerful. That's the Almighty. I don't think that it's hard for some people to envision that you can have a relationship with the creator of heaven and earth. When I began to accept that, everything began to change for me. That the God that created heaven and earth lives in me. The God that spoke things into existence, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead quickens me. I want you to understand that this is very powerful because you can't see it. You have to believe it. Or you listen to me. Not with your head. Not with this physical heart. But with that heart that's within you. With your very soul. I want to read it to you now from the Good News Translation. It says, whoever goes to the Lord for safety. Whoever remains under the protection of the Almighty. Now, let me share something with you. I know I'm talking to you tonight, and I don't know you, or don't know your business, but as a pastor, an evangelist, travel throughout the world, I find that many people, when they find fall into trades trouble, or some situation that worried an H out of them, never turn to God because they turn to their friends. They turn to their family. They turn to their own reasoning. And usually that puts them further behind or in a greater burden later. They take shortcuts instead of simply coming to God. I want you to understand in Good News Version, it said, whoever goes to the Lord. The Lord will never come for you for just because you're in trouble. When Peter was sinking after he had walked on water, and he began to look at his storms and began to look at his troubles and he was afraid. He started sinking. The Lord never came to him until he cried out, save me. You're going to have to ask God to save you. Save you means this. You mean you're turning to God for safety. Until you ask him. But when you do, you've got to be willing to let him have it. You've got to be willing to do it his way, which means it says here, Whoever goes to the Lord for safety, whoever remains under the protection of the Lord, that means you bring this situation of concern to God. Leave it there. You heard me say, bring your troubles to church so you can have freedom in your home. I always say, if you want to get the devil out of your house, you take God to somebody else's house. God will fight your battles. Are you listening to me today? I want you to know that each one of these versions are giving us a flavor for Psalm 91. Just the first verse. This is teaching number one. 91 Diva. Are you listening to me? Look what he said in the Holman Christian Standard Bible. The one who lives under the protection of the Most High dwells in the shadow of the Almighty. Now, which one of these you like best? I want to tell you something. I take it personal. And I take it personal because I don't know what you're going to do. But for me, I'm going to dwell with God. 
I had forgot about those scenarios tonight until I was in prayer and God reminded me. I want to tell you something. I was, I was in pins and needles. I never woke my family up. I never ever, they slept through the whole storm. But I want to tell you something. I didn't get out of that car. Lightning was coming through the car. Lightning was all around. But the lightning wasn't coming to hurt me. The lightning came to guide me. Are you listening to me tonight? I want to talk to you. It might not have been the same for somebody else. But if you would just look on and see the recompense of the wicked. Are you wanting to dwell in that place tonight? Are you ready to let go and live in the very presence of God? My God, he loves you. Are you feeling his love right now? That you didn't fail. That no matter what you're going through, your heartaches or your troubles or the things that stick in situations or that seem like the mountains that you can't seem to get through and the hurdles that you can't jump over and the holes that you can't fill in life. And the weariness of, of, of doing the same old thing, always getting stuck in that fear. Are you listening to me tonight? I listen to my God because he's tempering me. He's preparing me. Are you listening to me? And I want you to understand something. When you shine, people notice you shine. People respect you. They know that's something different. Because in the Holman translation, the one who lives under the protection of the Most High. Now stop right there. I need God's protection every single minute of my life. You can't take it for granted, people. Did you know that most people, are y'all ready for this? Most fatal accidents aren't on the major highways. They were within two to five miles of your house. That's why I don't get in a car. I never go anywhere without prayer. I don't go to no store without praying. I don't go anywhere without asking God for protection. I'm telling you, I don't go in the bank without praying. Ain't no thief going to steal my money. We're going to be in a fight. But I don't have to worry about that. I'm going to go when the thief ain't going to be there because God guides my steps. You cannot live this life on your own. Look what he said. He says in Romans, Christian Bible, the one who lives under the protection of the Most High dwells in the shadow of the Almighty. I just want to give you a flavor. This is not all the Bible. This is at least 30 translations. I just want to pull a few out. But I wanted you to see, when you're reading your Bible, you may not get the full flavor because you may think you know what dwelling is. How many see what dwelling is tonight? Dwelling means you live there. Abide means I'm resting. I'm sitting. I'm not going anywhere. When I gave my life to Christ, I told myself, I'm not going back in the world. I decided I'm going to live in God. That is salvation, people. That is when you know that you have that protection. I think we can all see there is more to this scripture than just saying it or reading it. What I was sharing with you tonight is what I'm getting ready to show you. It's about knowing God. I'm telling you what a beautiful year. The word of the Lord for our ministry for this year for the whole world is seeing God with 2020. Are you seeing God right now? Are you seeing the nature of God right now? Are you seeing that God is forever protecting you, standing over you, watching over you like a shadow? Are you understanding that he's not controlling you? He's not going to make you. He's not trying to mess up your life. That's the lie from Satan that Satan gave Eve from the garden. Here's what he said. Everything that God has given you, everything that God has done for you, isn't good enough. He's keeping you from something. So they ate the fruit of rebellion. 
Can you imagine that God put you in a garden where you don't have to sweat by the brow, you don't have to get bit by snakes or and mosquitoes? And no disease, no sickness, you didn't ever have to die. And then a lie comes and tells you that it isn't good enough. So what lie is going to take you out today? What is the enemy saying to you that, here's what he does. He tells you that God, you can't be in God's presence because you're not holy enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not this color. You're not that color. You wasn't born on the right side or whatever. You were born a drunk. You always can be a drunk. You were born poor. You will always be poor. That God is not in you. That you, you, you're not a nun. You're not, you're not that type of person. That's the lie he tells you. I want you to know that Jesus died once and for all. There were thieves on the cross. At least one of them made it. That tells you, you got a good chance of making it too. I want to tell you tonight, it's about knowing God. Psalm 91 is not for everybody. It says here in one of the translations, whoever, it says, the one, it says, live in. These translations say these things. I want you to understand, it's about knowing God for yourself. Now, I know that when you say, people, everybody say, I know God, and here's the first thing they'll say is, is Matthew 7. Don't judge me. I'm so glad that somebody can judge me. I'm so glad that somebody can correct me. I'm so glad because that's how I learn, by being in a secret place. Sometimes by going to church, by listening to my pastors, by listening to reading books, by listening to sermons, by listening to things that I wanted to adjust my life. Because they were saying things that now they're dead. They're going on to heaven. And I'm still walking and I'm saying that's what they meant today. You may not understand everything right now. But if you stay in the shadow, you stay in the secret place. I told you, you will see as God sees. You will understand as he understand, know as he know, speak as he spoke. Makande itokoro bosanda. Now watch this. Knowing God is big. Because we have, we have here two of the names of God that shared his very being. Not just his character, but who he is. And he can never be anyone or anything other than who he is. I like what the Isaiah 43 Elder Lee spoke Sunday. I mean, I've been in that word all week. And he says, there is no other God. I created no other God. I am the God of Israel. I am the one. But I want you to understand about those names. The, the first one, the most high. I want you to see, whoever goes or dwells in the secret place of the Most High, not your place, people. It's God's place. It's, that word there is Elion, the God Most High, the possessor of heaven and earth. There is nowhere else to go. When you come to God, there's nowhere else. He's got you covered. He's the possessor of the heavens and the earth. He's the creator of everything that's ever been created. You should be jumping right now. You have a relationship with the one, the uno, the boss, of the, the God, the possessor of heaven and earth. That's the, what the most high is. Don't that make a difference in you understanding that when you come to God, you're not coming to a secondary person. You're coming to the primary. When you pray to God, you're not going to the Supreme Court to debate and debate and debate to give you a ruling. You're going to get an answer. Because the scripture says in Psalm 91, because he loved me, know my name. When he pray or when he call on me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. I'm talking to you about knowing 
God. When you know God, you know he's still chill. You know he's your defense. You know his word is true. That no sin, sickness, or disease shall come near you. You know that the plague and the and and the, and the uh, destruction that lurks about in the night, in the darkness, will not harm you, cause God says so. That's knowing. You have to know this, people. I mean, you take medicine every day. Many of you got more faith in that little pill. That pill fall on the floor and it's your last one. You're going to get it off that floor and you're going to blow it on it and you're going to take it. You ain't thinking about no COVID-19. But you got more faith in your little pill that the doctor gave you because you, you didn't say you know that it heals you or it's going to make you better. You think it's going to make you better. Because you're still taking them. Here's what I'm saying. When you take the word of God, you don't think it works. You got to get to a place where you know it works. This first part of Psalm 91 is about knowing God, verse 1. Knowing God the Most High. He threw his name in, El, El Elum. But look at the second name, El Shaddai. I want you to understand about El Shaddai. It means God Almighty. It means the all-powerful God. Now watch this. The all-sufficient one. Doesn't that sound familiar? When I'm weak, he's strong. When I'm poor, he's rich. So that he gives his grace to me so I should be sufficient. God. Are you wanting to know God tonight? How's your fear of God picking up? Are you ready to give him a hug? Are you ready to receive his hands of protection? Are you listening to me tonight? I want you to understand that this one verse here is a beginning in knowing God. I want you to know the all-sufficient one. Pause right there. Lift up your hands. Give him some praise. Feel that, feel, feel that transfer. Feel him. Give him all that agony. Give him all that frustration. Give him all your fears, all your concerns, all your doubts. He's sufficient. He shall meet my needs according to his riches and glory. I'm not talking about a geographical location. I'm not talking about a physical place. I'm talking about in the spirit that cannot change. That cannot be altered. You can't. I don't care what you say about God. I don't care what you do. I don't care if you believe him. I don't care if you don't believe him. I don't care if you know him. I don't know him. He, you're not going to change his name. His name is Elion. The Most High. The one of created heavens and earth. His name is El Shaddai. The all-sufficient one. He got the answer to all that you ask. And everything you need. That's why I pray before I take a step. I ask him for protection. I ask him for guidance. Because he knows what lurks out there that I can't see. Are you listening to me today? As I told you about that rest, God want to bring you to that rest. You see, when you know God, I didn't say think. You can rest. You can rest from your troubles. You can rest from your worries. You can rest from the stress. Are you listening to me? Think about that. Some of you go to sleep without praying. You know, I told you that most accidents happens within two to five miles from your house, fatal. Did you know that most people have died from heart attacks when they wake up in the morning? I'm talking to you tonight. You better get rid of those little kitty prayers. And you need to pray that God give your sleep to him. That your sleep should be sweet and your rest be the best. You know why? Because people are stressed out. 
they got so much hell going on in their lives, they got nothing to wake up for. I'm talking to you tonight. Knowing God, here's what it said, gives you life. He who lives in the, the protection of God. That means you live, not die. When God, uh, you bring your life to him. This knowing is the utmost intimacy. I'm talking about an intimate relationship with God. I'm talking about that, that God, you want to share everything with God. Every thought, every fear, every problem. When you make mistakes, when you fall, you get back up again. You hold his hands because he's standing beside you. The shadow is with you. You can't stay down. You get back up. You turn the cheek. You go to extra mile. You give your cloak. You hold back your words of anger and speak love. God is with you. Knowing God, are right, you listening to me today? It's not a, but it's a divine and direct touch. The inner person with the Creator that anyone can experience. Anyone can experience what I'm talking about. Jesus said, Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Anyone can. What am I saying? I'm talking about that supernatural touch, that intimacy that you know that God is with me. Not think that he's with you. This is not luck. This is not chance. This is dwelling. This is real. It's a real place that you live in life. But you, you have to bring it to God. I want you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 7. Because I want to show you that not everyone wants this. And I want to show you something real quick. Real quick. Wow. Where did time go? Are you getting anything out of the word tonight? Praise be the living God. Blow a kiss to Jesus if you are. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21. Matthew chapter 7 verse 21. Let your fingers do the walking. Let the Bible do the talking. Hallelujah. Praise be the living God. Do you understand now? That you're going to have to know Psalms 91. You don't have to know it in your head and quoting it. You need to have it in your heart. I'm telling you something that when I say it, all peace come. You don't know the number of things. And, and you listen to the fear out there. That, as Brother Joseph said, and I'm telling you, I wish I would have read that book in March. Because I would have turned that darn TV off. Are you listening to me today? All the time I wait. Look at all the food you done bought. Look at all the masks you got stocked up. Look at all the hand sanitizer. You thought they were going to run out. Amen. All right, listen to me. But you guess what? They didn't. Because God will provide. I told you you have to learn to make do. Are right, you listening to me today? Look at Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21. I want you to look at the word of God because I don't want you to hear what I say, but what God said. He says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, I want to tell you about the secret place. I used to think the secret place was the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. It's not. The secret place is Christ at the right hand of God. He's resting. Until you make all his enemies under his feet. You're resting too. That's why you can tread upon the serpents and the scorpions and the big lions and the big serpents. You can kick out of the way. Glory to be to God. When I come walking and you come walking, when you know God, they see you. COVID-19 has to reverse. That's what God told me March the 29th or March the 19th when he said reverse it. He's, that's what he said that morning. He said, when COVID-19 sees you, it will reverse itself. I just said, what you mean? He said, reverse it. I said, what you mean reverse it? He said, spell it backwards. I spelled it backwards. I said, what does that mean? He said, put it in Google. When I put it in Google, it came up Psalms 91. It blew me away, people. I'm talking to you tonight because I was dwelling in the secret place. 
I stayed up all night praying about covenant relationship with God. I knew the squirrels had something that I didn't have, but I had it. Listen, you got it. Now it's time for you to activate it by knowing God. Because look what he said. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father. I want you to put that in brackets. Because this is where we're disturbing. Everybody, don't, um, they think they got to do some work. You don't have to do the will of God. We're going to talk about it. Who is in heaven will enter. So that means we got to do something. Right? So everybody think, well, you ain't doing enough. You're not holy enough. You ain't dressed right. You ain't doing this. That's not what he's talking about. I'm going to show you. Look at verse 22. Many will say to me on that day, and that is a day. I'm talking to you tonight about knowing God. We don't know when Jesus is going to come. If you think you know him, you don't have to worry about it. When he cracked those eastern sky, you're going to be running and ask the rocks to fall on you. I done seen that in vision three times in my life. I done preached it once. You go to that YouTube and you'll see a message. Revelation chapter 6, part 2, the seals. And I don't know why God had me to, um, he wanted me to release that in, what, 2019. Now watch this. Many will say to me, in verse 22, on that day, Lord, did we not work for you, prophesy in your name, and in your name cast out, that was something they were doing some work, and in your name perform many miracles. Those are some powerful things. I'm asking God for those gifts right now. That's, you know, but Lord said, and then I will declare to them, are y'all ready for this? This is the essence of Psalm 91. I never knew you. It wasn't because of the works they was doing. The work, the will of God, y'all ready for this? Is knowing God. When you know God, you stop working and rest. You let God work. When you work, God rests. When you rest, God works. The will of God is simply trusting God. Because your faithfulness will be my shield. It says this in, in verse 2. He says, my God in whom I trust. That's the will of God. Look what it said. I never knew you. So that means if God doesn't know you, would you agree you didn't know God? I'm telling you tonight, get to know God. God for yourself. You get to know God and you don't have to worry about God. God going to honor you. God going to rescue you. God going to protect you. God going to provide for you. God going to meet your needs. God going to bring you peace. God going to give you rest. God going to raise you up. God already took your place. That's the first communion we had. But tonight when we have the second communion, you're going to be in a secret place. Because you're going to commune not thinking, but knowing you are in God. Glory be to God. Now watch this. And then I would declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. And what he's saying, all that stuff that you're doing, mounts to a hill of beans, if you don't know God. Knowing God, it, it, it makes you want to live in it. I don't go to church just to get points. I went to church because I need to learn more about God. Also, I was escaping the world of things that plagued me. I didn't want to go back to that life. And I found out, instead of going to the parties, i will be in Bible study. And then pretty soon, I began to prosper and begin to grow in the things of God. And I begin to see I can live without that stuff. All right, listen to me. Now turn with me to the Father. Let's go to let's go to Saint John chapter fifteen. And I want you to see that this is in the New Testament. And in verse number four, abide in me. And we saw that that word abide means rest. It also means live. He said, live in me 
and I in you. If you live in me, I'll live in you. You got to know this. Are you listening to me? Wow, where did the time go? So, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it lives in the vine, so neither can you unless you live in me. You won't bring forth the fruit in life that love, joy, peace, goodness, kindness, mercy, temperance, and faithfulness against such there is no law. The fruit of the Spirit. You won't have those qualities working for you or in your life. Your character, I can guarantee you, no matter what you do, you will not change God from being the Most High God. You will never change God from being your all-sufficient one. And whatever happens in life, when you're in God, it will not change you. Are you still, you're still going to bear fruit. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up. And they gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burnt. Sound like they lost their protection, right? If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it shall be done for you. Won't you take that pill in the morning? I want you to read that again in verse number 7. If you abide, live in me, and my words live in you, ask whatever you wish, and it shall be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit, that so prove to me, my disciples. Just as the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Live in my love. Let me tell you, when you find that secret place, I told you it's the most intimate place. In knowing God, you discover love. That love that is inseparable. That never, ever separates from you. You abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. These things I have spoken to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. Now I want to ask you something. Some of us got children. I've been a child. But suppose I was to have went out and broke the law. And my daddy had to come get me. He's going to be pretty angry. And he's going to say, that's my, that's, that, my, that's my son. He, he ain't no lawbreaker. He didn't break no law. But they got me on film. Robbing a bank. With my heel all land hat on. He can't deny that I broke the law. But guess what? He can't protect me. He couldn't protect me. He could only protect me while I abide within the laws of the home. That's the same way God protects you. If when you know his word and you take his word to your life, you have that protection, knowing God. Psalm 91, verse 1. I want you to understand something tonight. I want to give you an opportunity to take that love, receive that love of God, because it's the love of God that brings us to repentance. It's also the goodness of God. It's, it makes us want to please God and stay with God. Hallelujah. Praise you, got something out of tonight. Seeing God in your life with 2020. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your divine presence. We thank you for helping us to know you more. Thank you for this unction to get our hearts unstuck from the world. Let us live in you and abide in you and live in your protection and rest in your shadow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Praise.